So I'll be talking on the prospective ultrasound surveillance study for incidence and recovery period of COVID-19 vaccination related axillary lymphadenopathy. The study has been performed uh, by uh, Kida et al. at St. Luke's International Hospital in uh, Tokyo. Next slide. Next, yeah, so the background of the study is basically it's a COVID-19 vaccination related lymphadenopathy is a frequent imaging finding that is indistingu indistinguishable from the malignant uh, nodal involvement. It leads to diagnostic difficulties and prompts unnecessary intervention in individuals who are for routine cancer screening or those with cancer history. An expert panel from USA had recommended a delay of six weeks from the final vaccination to schedule routine screening to allow for reactive lymphadenopathy to resolve, but there were no prospective trials for COVID-19 vaccination related lymphadenopathy using imaging examinations. It is crucial to confirm clinical facts and recovery process of lymphadenopathy based on imaging examination. Next slide. So the purpose was to determine the incidence and imaging characteristics of COVID-19 vaccination related axillary lymphadenopathy by ultrasound examination and to assess the recovery period required for improvement of the lymphadenopathy based on prospective ultrasound surveillance. So the uh, women aged above eight, uh, 20 who were working in St. Luke's Hospital were enrolled and these uh, women had received at least uh, they have, all of them had received second shot of Pfizer COVID-19 vaccination within the preceding eight weeks. And uh, the study was carried, the enrollment was carried out between uh, May 1st to 27th of 2021. The exclusion criteria included a history of any cancer or surgical history, any uh, history of uh, surgery in the upper limb or axilla and the patient, uh, participants who are having atopic dermatitis or autoimmune diseases because all these uh, conditions can independently lead to lymphadenopathy. Uh, ultrasound assessment uh, was performed for bilateral axillary lymph nodes at enrollment. If lymphadenopathy was detected, an ultrasound was performed every three weeks until uh, lymph nodes showed resolution. The lymph nodes in ultrasound having a short axis dimension of more than five millimeters were considered to be significant. And the questionnaire was also used uh, at, this, uh, at the time of uh, enrollment to inquire about the other side effects uh, um, attributed to vaccination. So on day zero, uh, the initial study was done and the, lady, uh, the participants who were found to have lymphadenopathy were followed up every three weeks with ultrasound. Next slide. So the incidence rate and imaging characteristics of lymphadenopathy detected by ultrasound were evaluated. The recovery period required for the improvement of lymphadenopathy were assessed using kaplan meyers method. And the association of lymphadenopathy with other side effects was assessed using the chi-square test as well as special exact test as appropriate. A total of 135 women were enrolled in this study and the median age of the participants was about 37 years and none of them had history of COVID vaccine infection. And uh, the period from uh, second vaccination to enrollment was about uh, less than four weeks in 7% uh, of the cases and maximum about 93% uh, had just after eight weeks, just before eight weeks. Next. So the results showed that uh, on ipsilateral side, almost 50% uh, of the patients had a lymph node uh, that showed a short axis dimension of more than five millimeters. The long axis dimension was not very significant. And on the contralateral side, uh, only 10% of the enrolled uh, people had a lymph node of more than five millimeters size. So half of the patients demonstrated ipsilateral axillary lymphadenopathy at the time of enrollment, that was approximately six weeks. And uh, the number of lymph nodes were also determined. So of the 50% of the patients who had enlarged lymphadenopathy, almost 19% had only one lymph node involvement. 18% uh, of the patients had two lymph node involvement. 10% had three lymph node involvement. And four and five were seen in approximately three and 1% of the uh, enrolled participants. The ultrasound features that mimicked uh, suspicious lymph nodes included cortical widening that occurred in 43% of the patients. The lymph nodes were hyperemic in 11% and absence of hilum was seen in 11% of the patients. So the ultrasound features that mimic malignant lymph node was noted in approximately 43% of the patients. These were seen only in the ipsilateral axillary lymph nodes. And the recovery period from lymphadenopathy was determined. Week six, that is at presentation, uh, the lymph nodes were seen in almost 48% of the patients. 
in week 2 uh, this had regressed to 38% by week 10 only 70% of the patients had lymphadenopathy whereas it still persisted in 6% of the patients by week 12 so half of the patients showed ipsilateral axillary lymphadenopathy detected by ultrasound at 6 weeks post covid vaccination and it persisted up to 10 weeks and most of them they resolved at 12 weeks so this was the first study. Um, this is the first prospective study to determine the incidence and recovery of the vaccination-related lymphadenopathy based on ultrasound features that is readily available. So the main highlights were half of the participants showed COVID vaccination-related axillary lymphadenopathy based on ultrasound. And the imaging characteristics were indistinguishable from malignant nodal involvement that were observed in more than 40% of the patients in vaccine-related lymphadenopathy in this study. Next, please. So the recovery period from lymphadenopathy was commonly observed even at eight weeks and mostly resolved after 12 weeks from the second vaccination in this study. So in the previous review, COVID vaccination related lymphadenopathy had persisted for um, less than more than six weeks in 29% of the patients. Whereas here it showed that uh, up to 12 weeks, it is persistent in up to 6% uh, of the patients. So what are the clinical implications of these uh, of the findings that is a non-urgent imaging examination such as breast cancer screening would be recommended to be postponed to at least 10 to 12 weeks following the latest vaccination and the patients with primary uh, with breast cancer should be vaccinated on the contralateral arm to the side of primary cancer to avoid diagnostic control and the patient's vaccination information that is the date of vaccination as well as the injection site should be available for the clinicians and radiologists for accurate diagnosis and management so to conclude due to high incidence and imaging characteristics of covid 19 vaccination related lymphadenopathy non-urgent breast cancer screening would be recommended to be scheduled at least 10 to 12 weeks following the latest vaccination and the patient's vaccination information should be taken into consideration on cancer screening and diagnosis. So this is the reference. 